Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Chris Lukaup and in this video I would like to talk about my experience and the things that I have found out when it comes to planaria and freshwater invertebrates. Here it's mainly freshwater dwarf shrimp from the genus Caridina, Neocaridina or Paracaridina. For those of you that maybe have heard about planaria or have heard this term or some of the people might have never heard about it, they just hear it for the first time now because they see the video, I would like to give a short introduction about what uh, these worms are because they are also invertebrates and how they work and why they are so dangerous for, especially for uh, people in the hobby that have freshwater invertebrates like shrimp, snails, even small crayfish, they could be a nightmare. Of course there's people in the hobby that keep fish but for those people planaria are usually not a big deal because um, they don't reproduce that fast because maybe they uh, feed from the fish food and usually fish food you don't have it laying around for a, a longer time or there's fish that eat planaria so usually in a fish tank it's not such a big deal. So what are planaria? They belong to the flatworms or turbellaria uh, the, that is the Latin name and whirlworms would be the, the English word but in fact I would not like to bore you with all these Latin names so that's why I, st I will stay with flatworms. So this group of animals consists of different species uh, with different characteristics. They can be found in both freshwater and salt water and as a rule they are predators and therefore consider the pests in the aquarium. However, not all species of uh, flatworms or willworms are dangerous for the aquarium uh, or for fish, shrimp, snails because they only feed on microorganisms. But there are actually two types of planaria flatworm commonly found in an aquarium and the one that is most common in my view uh, belongs to the genus Tugesia. So before there is a panic then and you see a little white worm on the glass of the aquarium we should find out if it's really a planaria that you have there. So usually um, recognizable is the flattened body which is not ringed but the most important feature for identification are the two eye spots at the head end. And also the triangular head is one of the characteristics that I would say you can identify a planaria. So if you have a cell phone take a photo zoom in and then you can probably see it much better. Planarians are quite sensitive to light because they can uh, perceive brightness. I mean, they can see if it's dark or if it's um, light and therefore they tend to seek shelter in darker areas in the aquarium, uh, such as near the bottom or in the bottom or in the filter. Sometimes they are hiding under rocks or under logs or in, in this case, maybe some aquarium roots that you have or any other deco that you have in your aquarium. And if you switch on the light in the night, you will see the biggest part of the population out. And if you see five or ten planarias during the day, that means that 80% of the population is hiding. Especially if you have fish in the aquarium also, besides shrimp or snails. Because planarias are also afraid to get eaten, so just the very brave ones will come out uh, during daylight. And if you have fish, probably even less. And usually the first victims of a planaria are the snails because they are so slow and planaria are quite fast they can go inside of the shell of the house and can lay their eggs there and depending on the size they can kill them or in, in any way they will harm them but baby snails they can get killed and then eaten but not only the juvenile snail or shrimp can get eaten. Also the eggs and even the eggs of fish if they lay their eggs in moss like I showed you before the galaxy pearl danio and all these uh, fish that lay eggs in, in mosses or on the ground the planaria will eat them and then they will attack um, the juveniles like baby shrimp or baby snails because they love protein. They are predators and that's why they go for that. But it's not always the case that uh, planaria attack shrimp. Sometimes the shrimp die of other reasons and then the planaria go and eat them. And now you will ask me what is happening here. So the story behind this was that I got a shrimp from somebody to photograph. 
I put it in my photo aquarium that was 100% planaria free and while I was photographing I already thought this shrimp looks weak, it is not behaving normal, normal and it's just like I need to give it more time to recover maybe but after a couple of minutes out of the shrimp and this planaria came out from the carapax it crawled out from under the carapax and it stayed on the shrimp and then for me it was pretty clear why the shrimp was so weak because pro or probably this planaria was sitting there inside the shrimp feeding on the shrimp for a longer time and that's why the the shrimp was so weak that it just gave up and of course i published this picture before and then a lot of people ask me so why did you not save it why did you not react but it was much too late to react um of course after like i think it was 30 minutes the shrimp was dead and uh, i could have put the planaria away but it was so weak and already so um, damaged that it could probably would have never recovered and another thing is also that if you look at the hands and uh, the pincers of the hands the little fans on the hands they have been glued because also the planaria they uh, release this slimy stuff and if they are on rocks or on wood and the shrimp glue their pincers they will starve to death so that is one aspect also i want that uh, that you guys think about that too it's not only that they will attack the shrimp i think it's only maybe a tactics of of the planaria that they release this slime and maybe some of the animals like here the shrimp they get weak by not eating and then the planaria will attack them and this could be a tactics like we have other animals in the animal kingdom that do this kind of things like the komodo and some snakes that do the same thing first they weak the animal and then later they go for it this is just a theory that i have uh, i have to do more research on this you know that i'm photographing a lot of shrimp and i get a lot of shrimp from different continents from different people breeders and so on so it was not the only time that i filmed it what I, you saw before with the blue bowl shrimp so this is the second time i was photographing the shrimp and while i was photographing the planaria came out from under the carapax and you can see it here the carapax is bent outwards so there the planaria was sitting feeding of the shrimp and while i was photographing the shrimp just fell down didn't move anymore and was dead and the planaria came out of it so um, this could be also one of the, the ways you can get planaria to your shrimp tank. If you buy shrimp from a breeder or from the trade or whatever, this can be one of the ways to introduce planaria to your tank because sometimes they can sit inside of the shrimp. And another thing that I have found out, I showed you this picture on the beginning of the video and when I published this on Instagram, a while ago and on Facebook a lot of people said this must be fake this cannot be true but in fact it is true um, the story behind is that I had a lot of nano tanks with different uh, colored neocardina there was yellow ones there was blue ones and so on and I went to an expedition I left for three weeks and I just got some neocardina for these tanks so I put them in every tank and when I came back I saw that in the tanks have been colorful planaria and i really wondered and in the in the tank in the nano tank with the red uh, shrimp there have been red planaria and uh, this was amazing and i thought beautiful but uh, crazy too and then i looked at the blue ones the same thing here i had blue planaria in this tank and um, the same happened also with all the other uh, color types or, or neocardina tanks in the black ones which is not really black it's dark blue in fact or dark brown i had planaria that have been blue or dark blue and the same thing in the yellow tank so for me <coughs> this is proof that the planaria also uh, keep the color of the shrimp they store it for a while in their body and uh, it depends on what color shrimp they eat you can prove that they have eaten a red one a yellow one or a blue one so a lot of people will ask me now so how 
do we get rid of these guys and i have to say i want to present you this uh, issue in an, one of the next videos because there's so many ways especially on the internet you can read a lot from from the planarian traps to panacure to even garlic what worked for me best is this thing called no planaria i got it from a friend and i'm a lazy guy and that's why i just wanted to put this inside without any trying out and this worked for me great in a couple of two or three days all the planaries have been gone and i don't know this company i don't know the people who work for them so this is not an advertising it just worked for me so thanks for watching and i see you in the next video keep on shrimping and don't forget to subscribe